Fox Sports. We are Blackboard. We are Sports Out. It's a taste of October in April. Temperatures in the upper 40s in New York. And the Braves' bats have gone as cold as the weather. Hopefully that will change today as the Braves hope to avoid a sweep at the hands of the Red Hot Mets here at City Field. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe. Great to be back at the ballpark. Who better than to stop this Mets winning streak than the Braves' ace Julio Tehran among pitchers with 10 or more starts in April. He's the only one left standing. He's undefeated at 5-0 in April. Well, let's see what happens today. Julio pitched a good ball game against the Mets in Atlanta and picked up the win, but in his most recent start, it was not so good. You're looking at action from Turner Field, and he uh, was he was sharp, but he also walked a few guys. He had a good breaking ball working. He's going to need that today, but in his last start in Toronto, he was straight and up, and that's a bad combination. A Bartolo Colon also picked up a win in Atlanta. He won that ball game four to three, gave up a home run to Johnny Gomes. But as you're seeing here, pinpoint control going to both sides of the plate. There are the numbers for the year and against the opponent. Seven starts for Bartolo Colon against the Braves in his career. He's gone at least seven innings in every one of those starts. Maybe the Braves can get to him early this afternoon. Look for fastballs yep. from Bartolo Colon on a cold day. He is indeed an ageless wonder. When we come back, Christina Fitzpatrick will talk about this Mets right-hander who's off to a splendid start, as are the Mets, who have the best record in baseball entering play today. Atlanta Braves baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day.
day for some day baseball as the Braves try to avoid a sweep here at City Field at the hands of Bartolo Colon, who is starting for the Mets today. And most baseball fans have witnessed the lighthearted nature of Bartolo Colon over the years, whether it's him throwing the ball up and down in between hitters, laughing at himself while he's at the plate. You know, he definitely brings an interesting element of entertainment to the game, but at the same time, it all seems to be part of Bartolo Colon's program and what has helped him become such a successful pitcher over the years, according to the Braves. I think uh, what he does hitting is kind of what he does pitching too. So it's it's always fun to see what he's going to do. You know, he always has. He always seems to make everybody laugh during one of his starts. So we'll see what he does today. I don't know. I mean, he's he's got a method of madness though. He's been doing it for a long time, all the way all the way up to the you know expo days. You know, um, I was actually his teammate in '12 when he broke the major league record for consecutive strikes. I think he threw like 36 or 37 consecutive strikes, which. Uh, I mean, you think about the human element to that. Two big league hitters uh, says a lot about his talent. Johnny Gomes also said to me, you know, look, when you look at him, he's obviously not going to be on the cover of Men's Health magazine any time soon. But don't be fooled. He gets his work in. He's a true baseball player. He's a quiet guy. He kind of keeps to himself in the clubhouse, but definitely brings some entertainment out to the field. We'll see what he brings today to City Field. We'll have lineups and first pitch on the other side of the break as the Braves try to avoid a sweep at the hands of the Mets today here in New York. Crowd gathering on this frosty afternoon for baseball at City Field. Temperatures in the upper 40s as the Braves try to avoid a sweep at the hands of the Mets. Here's Freddie Gonzalez's Academy Sports and Outdoors starting lineup. Hopefully the middle of the order can be productive. Got to get Freddie Freeman's bat swinging again. A.J. Brzezinski's hot so he plays. And you see what Johnny Gomes has done in his career against the Angels wonder Bartolo Colon is off to a perfect start this year Joe he's three and oh as a Mets and never pitches with sleeves on he may regret that today as chilly as it is but we wanted to show you his pitch arsenal since the beginning of last season we keep talking about how many fastballs he throws well he's over 80 percent on fastballs works both sides of the plate cuts it sinks it a little bit but not too many breaking balls also he doesn't walk anybody. He's only walked one batter in his first 20 innings this year to go with 18 strikeouts. And when he does have runners aboard, nobody's getting any hits. 
the league is hitting 083 against him with runners in scoring position. He's an amazing athlete. And here's the defense behind Bartolo Colon for game three. What a catch by Juan Lagares in center field last night. He rocked Jace Peterson of at least a triple. Eric Campbell and Lucas Duda on the infield corners. Daniel Murphy's back at its second base. Wilmer Flores having a great series offensively. And our first look at Anthony Wrecker. He gets the start day game after the night game with Bartolo Colon as his battery mate. Eric Young will get things started for the Braves. Alberto Cayaspo, then Nick Marcakis. E.Y. at 184 for the year. Picked up his second triple here yesterday. Colon's first is upstairs and we're underway. 49 degrees, the official temperature at first pitch. What did you say the feels like temperature was earlier? Uh, a few minutes ago it was uh, the wind chill was 43. And that's why. Things are starched blowing out toward right. Young with a bunt and it's going to end up in shallow right field. <laughs> wow, okay. Longest bunt in baseball history starts the game for Eric Young. He's been hitting the ball hard, or it would be easy to say, well, that's the best contact he's made in a week, but he's been hitting the ball on the button. Bunning wise, too. <laughs> a thing of beauty. So he's a threat to steal. He's got a couple of swipes, and here's Kai Aspo. Alberto, the start at third base today. At a 282 mark. Early runs are always important for a starting pitcher, and I think we've chronicled over the first two weeks how important they are for this Braves team. This is not a club that's equipped to make big comebacks. A few early runs against Bartolo Colon should help Julio Tehran settle in on a cold day. And that's what? upstairs for Cayaspo. Colon start at Turner Field. He went seven innings. Gave up six hits and three runs, did not walk a batter. Struck out five, gave up a homer to Gomes. And oh, by the way, got a hit and drove in a run. His first RBI in 10 years. He wanted that call to get it from Jordan Baker, the plate umpire today. Two balls, no strikes. As Joe mentioned, Cologne seldom walks anyone. Just one base on balls in his first 20 innings this year. And he knows all about the speed of Eric Young, a 30 stolen base man for the Mets last year. Bouncing ball to first. It is got. There's one. The rap at first, the Mets get the lead runner, one man down. People talk about him being a good athlete and he gets his work in, but he's not fast, as you can see here. And his foot came off the bag, slipped off the top of the bag as he was catching that, and that may be the difference. And Terry Collins already is going to make an appeal on this play. Early on the field was Kiaspo was safe. This Cologne's foot came off the bat. Did it? He will appear to be out. His foot's coming. Here's a good angle. That would appear to be. One that they could perhaps overturn. Clear and convincing evidence is needed to overturn the call of safe at first base. He was. Bartolos is standing up behind the mound, flipping the ball in the air, patiently waiting. You can understand why Andy Fletcher called him safe, though, the way his foot slipped off the base. Verdict 
is in. The call is overturned. So it's a 3 6 1 double play. And two outs here in the top of the first. Bartolo said, ah, damn it. Cologne has never won the first four starts he's made in a season. He has started a season 4 0, however. It was back in 2007 with the Angels. Well, he'd be only the sixth starter 40 years or older to start a season 4 0 since 1914. Roger Clemens was the last in 04. And for a strike from Arcakis, having a terrific road trip. 362 for the season. In the air to center. Agaris is going to catch it. And Bartolo Collins out of the first inning with minimal damage. Well, goes to work for the Braves. Just underway in the order. Sleeves or jacket. He's a tough hombre. Let's see how Julio Teran fares against the Mets starting night. It's brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Lucas Duda is becoming a complete player, cornerstone player for the Mets, hitting 339 this year. Mets are doing all this without David Wright. They've won 10 straight games. They're unbeaten at home and start today's play with 12 wins in their first 15 games. Julio Teran's always pitched well at Turner Field. His home games in his career 15 and 8 sub 3 ERA still good numbers on the road but not quite as good 16 and 14 with a 3 6 ERA. He's 4 and 2 lifetime against the Mets beat him on April 11th 5 to 3 but walked 4 in the 6 innings he pitched his 4 keys to pitching success today. He's got to have better movement than he had in Toronto where he gave up 4 home runs but he is the ace of the staff and he can be the street buster today. They'll face Curtis Granderson. Drew the key walk in the eighth inning for the Mets last night. Turning into a winning run for New York. 196 for Granderson. And Julio misses downstairs. Shift for him on the infield. Simmons almost right behind the second base bag at short. And Julio way behind now. Three balls and a strike. Julio looks cold. Blowing in his hand. Looks uncomfortable. He's got sleeves on, but boy, the wind is really whipping his jersey around. And Granderson on five pitches draws the lead off one. He 
Sandy Bank pitching performance on our pitch tracks. We got the movement, but a little too much. Let's see if he can get a double play ball like Cologne did. Lagaris, a hot hitter. He brings a nine game hitting streak in today's play. Anderson, a short lead at first. And that's off the plate. One ball, no strikes. You've said it a couple of times in the series. You think Lagaris is the best center fielder in the National League. The catch he made last night, it'd be tough to argue with that evaluation. Kind of validated it, didn't he? Bono strikes. Seven pitches, six out of the zone to start the game for Julio. About the weather, if it was something that uh, Julio had a history of in cold weather. But remember the game he pitched in Colorado, the second game of that doubleheader a couple of years ago, where he kind of said, Here I am, 30 degree game, and just was brilliant at Coors Field. Magaris trying to bunt, tipped it into AJ's glove. Now it's a 2 2 count. <laughs> See if he can break a sweat, get loosened up, get into a rhythm here. Duda on deck, Anderson at first, nobody out, scoreless first inning. Too close to take, and we're going to spray the foul to the right. Hit late for the Mets last evening. And now the 2 2 pitch is popped up. Shallow center. In comes Young. He's going to make the catch. There is skies to center. There's your first out. <laughs> Game winning RBI, and he's already, I think, it's four already on the season for him out of the first 12 wins. He was two for four last night. After an 0 for three start in the first game of the series. Up and in to Lucas. One ball, no strikes. Big baseball week for the Mets. Again, they're trying to wrap up a perfect homestand. Then they head to the Bronx and start a three game series with the Yankees. Where we will all be Yankee fans, even if we're not. Try to get the Mets back to the pack in the National League East. Hopefully that will start today, getting a little closer. Three and a half back of New York. Pitch. Breaking the ball low. You're right, Joe. He does not look comfortable at all. This is not like Julio. Three and oh. No, Krasinski's calling all the different pitches, trying to not just keep trying to cram that fastball in there. He's called for his change up, his breaking ball, and he's missing with all of it. A strike. All bets are off now, though. Three and one to count. Runner goes. 
first pitch is high ball four. Second walk of the inning. The Mets have it set up for Michael Kadir now. Talked about the walks and how they're flaking the bullpen. Well, this isn't helping any either here at the beginning of the ball game for Julio. That start at Toronto where he gave up the four homers. He walked two in that game in five innings. That's not a lot. But he's walked seven men in 17 innings overall coming in and two already today. That's nine and 17 and a third. That's the reason why he and some of the other brave starters are having trouble taking the ball deep into the games. Pitch counts are piling up early. Now Kadir the hitter five for 16 with runners in scoring position for the Mets left fielder. Two on one out first inning. Pitch up and away. Remember, he had a bad outing. I think it was in San Francisco last year, and he talked about how he just had no feel for the baseball and had no grip. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Weather just like this. It was real cool. It said the ball felt slick. And that's why he keeps blowing on his hand to try to get a little. Moisture on there to maybe help his grip some. Dyer's knocked in seven runs. And he took upstairs, ball two. Fastball's there, it's 91. He's got some life. Here in New York, after six straight losing seasons, they're adding a 10 game winning streak. And Toronto Brzezinski can't get on the same page. Twice Julio stepped off, now for the third attempt, Brzezinski out to make sure. Now 20 pitches, only seven strikes. Three, one count to a dangerous hitter. Pocket straight back. Michael Kadir looks like I mean, if he just had his cap folded up and stuck in his back pocket, he looked like he would be playing for the 69 Mets. Instead of the 2015, he just looks like that old school ball player. Here comes the payoff. And Kadir takes high and tight. Yeah. Pretty good pitch. Here's the entire at bat. Thanks to PNC Bank. Bullpen's already going to get up. Here comes Roger. And chase a bad one there, so they went back to that spot. Nothing wrong with that pitch. That one kind of curved around the plate. Base is loaded for the Mets. Three walks. Julio Teron, Daniel Murphy. Is the batter. What scares you about seeing Murphy is he hasn't heated up yet. He's an all star. 
172 hits last year. 42 of them came in the first inning. Yeah, but at the same time, you know he's going to make contact. He doesn't strike out, so maybe he'll hit one at somebody and get you out of the inning for a double play. Nothing Julio's throwing is close enough to swing at right now. No ball, no strikes. Up evens the count. High drive right field. Marquez can't get it. It's past him and up against the fence. Granderson scores. Judas scores. Kadaya around third. Throw to the plate is late. Base is clearing double for Daniel Murphy. It's three nothing New York. Unfortunately, Chip, you were the right one. He was due, and he got a fastball belt high. And when that ball hit on the ground, it looked like Marcakis might have a chance to cut it off. And when it hit, it just shot to the right field fence. So Eric Campbell, the hitter. The Mets with three runs on one hit here in the bottom of the first. Campbell couldn't stop his swing. Strike one. Talked a lot about how much the Braves bullpen has been forced to work. You hope that Julio can find a rhythm. He's down three. Pitch off the knuckles back to the screen. Down two. And while we saw someone getting on the bullpen fun, there isn't anyone warming up. Feeling it must be as a major league pitcher when you go to the mound against a hot club and nothing's working. That's the fate of Tehran so far in the opening inning. A ball and two strikes. Krasinski smothered that. It's two and two. And you made a good point. AJ's not just sticking the first finger down and saying fastball, fastball, fastball. He's trying to get something to work that we can go to. Bite out of Brzezinski. Jordan Baker, the umpire, trying to give him a little time to collect himself. Now a 2 2 pitch. And a fastball right down the middle. He took it for the second out. Good spot there. 30 pitches in the inning. I think it took him 30 pitches to get loose, but that may be the case. His last inning in Toronto, he gave up a homer, a walk, and a double. So his last two innings pitched have not been stellar. Here's Romer Flores. Well, the offense that the Mets have featured this year. This guy is sort of hiding in the weeds. Eight for his last 19. Three of those hits are homers. And he scored seven runs in his last eight games play. Flores has turned things around after a shaky start. This one popped up for the center field. Eric Young battles the win. Now in a few steps. And he'll make the play to retire the side. Three runs on one hit. Three walks in the first inning. Cashed in by Daniel Murphy's bases clearing double.
third to support Freddie Freeman and the Melanoma Research Foundation. The Braves are offering a ticket package that includes a discounted ticket, a pair of Freeman arm sleeves, and a donation to the Melanoma Research Foundation. Sleeves are limited, so get your tickets today at Braves.com slash Freeman. That's a great promotion. New sleeves are coming handy today for the Braves first baseman. 48 degrees at the moment in New York. Now, Braves have to find a way to come back from a three run hole against Bartolo Colon. Well, they know they've got to score at least four against a guy whose ERA right now is 225. Times the plate have been tough for Freddie here in New York. 0 for 7 with five strikeouts. percent of his pitches are fastball. It's not like they're just straight as a no, string. Right? No, he's not just throwing fastballs down the middle. He's throwing two seamers to each side of the plate, getting it to run away from a lefty, cut it into a lefty. But it's his command. He just doesn't miss. If he misses, it's not by much, and it's usually by design. If he's ahead in the count, trying to get you to chase a ball a little bit farther off the plate. Johnny Gomes said to Christina and Braves live about Bartolo Colon. Throw 35, 36 consecutive strikes in a big league game. Remarkable. Yeah, he, he's good. He's 41 years old. Colon's 5'11, 285 out of Puerto Rico, lives in New Jersey now. Just throws Freddie Freeman. That ball backed up. 86 mile an hour fastball. That's usually in the danger zone for a pitcher. See how that ball moved, started in, went away. First strikeout for Bartolo Colon. That brings up A.J. Prasinski, there's catcher. Again, with a day game after a night game. And looking for offense, and AJ is going to have another hit. Have yourself a series. Remember last night, the first time he ever played in City Field, he had three hits. Yeah, and a walk. And I asked him after the game, I said, Are you going to be okay to go tomorrow? Because he's hot. And he looked at me like I had two heads. He goes, Yeah, why? And I said, Well, <laughs> not exactly a spring chicken. He goes, I'll be ready. So he's got a seven game hitting streak. And that will bring up Johnny Gomes. Johnny at 240. Well, baseball left today. Chip away against Bartolo Colon. It's three zip. And that's low. Ball one. And Christina was talking to Johnny about. Bartolo Cologne and he's had his share of good luck against him certainly. You could just tell how much he liked his former teammate, just had a kind of a twinkle in his eye when he was talking about Cologne. How much he enjoys him. But I think most players will tell you too that even if it's an opponent, they love seeing a guy. Who enjoys and has fun playing the game? Two and zero for Gomes. That's it for a strike. Toro's third amongst active pitchers in Major League wins. Only Tim Hudson and CC Safia have more wins than Bartolo Colon. He's one of five active pitchers with 2,000 or more strikeouts in the Major Leagues. Strike out today. Behind Gomes, two and one pitch. Right there, outside corner, two and two. Fourth on the list since 2013. 
I bet you almost every fan in baseball would get that one wrong. Yeah. Behind some very highly paid pitchers. Strike three, another fastball. If Ray's playing a guessing game with Bartolo Colon, they're guessing wrong again. Started it off the plate and it come back. And I know that pitch is moving. I know it's hard to read when it comes out of his hand because it looks like it's going to be outside. But the Braves have taken a ton of fastballs in this series. Started with Jonathan Neese. Anderson Simmons, Braves shortstop. He's running a six game straight. He said it at the time. Jason Neese, which got a report for Bartolo Colon on Thursday. Lots of fastballs. Krasinski a short lead with two outs. It's a corner. Flores is the guy who, no, I beg your pardon, it was Murphy who airmailed the throw. And right to the plate. And no question, Wrecker had the plate blocked. So we'll see what the appeal is about. If it's about blocking the plate or if it's about the call. In the meantime, Andrelton Simmons really jumped on that pitch and continues to hit Mets pitching hard. And watching the replay again, Anthony Record gave AJ Pruszynski no place to go. This may turn into a run for the Braves because the plate was blocked. But I for one hate that rule. And so do a lot of catchers and former catchers. All their lives they've been taught how to block the plate, and how to take a hard slide. And now they're told to olay it. What an incredible throw by Murphy. See AJ had no place to go and the, the rule states now that you got to give an alley. So a couple of things could be in play here. Did his foot get in before the tag or was the plate blocked. Preventing Krasinski from the ability to score the run. At the moment it's three nothing New York Simmons ended up at third base after he tattooed the ball to right center field. Krasinski was thrown out of the plate, but that is pending the ruling from Manhattan. That was a big time throw by Murphy. Didn't they use him in the outfield a little bit at times a couple of years ago? Might have. I'll check. About to find, oh, I thought he was about to take the headphones off. Yeah, Murphy's played 60 games in the outfield. He showed off, showed off an outfielder's arm there for a second baseman on that throw. Good relay. 
Yes, we understand that it's not the tag play, but the home plate collision rule is what's being debated with the umpires here at the ballpark. Well, you saw when we got a shot of the Braves dugout, you saw A.J. Pruszynski up on one of the top steps. He was watching it too, and he knows exactly what the rule states and what you can do and can't do. Look, I'm all for preventing injuries. Nobody wants to see star players get hurt, but I don't think Record did anything wrong by the old rules. No, no, I mean, it's being called the Buster Posey rule because he got run over, broke an ankle, and that's when it all changed. And this is the part that I think drives everybody crazy. Even a year later, Many major league catchers aren't really sure where to set up. They aren't really aware of how to position themselves. And in the heat of battle, the catcher has to look down, make sure he's in the right position to allow a runner to score, which, as you said, goes against everything they've been taught. Field a baseball and then try to complete the play at the plate. Just watching the replay here on the big screen at the ballpark and watching it in live action. Gives you a, a more realistic look at what AJ was presented by record. So the ball and the runner get there at the same time. So he had no place to go except right through him. And this day and age with the new rule, safe. So Terry Collins will come out. He wants an exp explanation. Under the old rules, Krasinski would have been out. Under the new rules, the Braves get their first run. This is a better angle in live action. Ball and runner get there at the same time, and absolutely no place for AJ to go. And that's why they overturned it. Jerry Meals is the crew chief. And he's the one giving the explanation. I love the result. I hate the rule. So I'm assuming that's a double for Simmons taking third on the throw for Murphy. And he's given an RBI and that review took four minutes and 43 seconds. Now you wonder about the rhythm of Bartolo Colon even with two outs. So the Braves are on the board. A two out double for Simmons gives him his ninth RBI. Here's Jace Peterson. Okay, Jace Peterson be ready on that first pitch. It may not have quite as good a movement as some earlier in the inning. Strike one. Too high from Bartolo Colon, even count. Jace at 194, he's two for 12 so far on the road trip. Batting eighth in front of Julio Tehran, who waits next. Simmons, good lead at third. Two and one. Same guy right now, is he? Not quite as sharp on a cold day. They did give him a baseball and let him throw a few while they were waiting for the response on the appeal. But on a cold day, you can tighten up in a hurry. Now it's full count.
that popped out of Rutgers glove. Peterson went fishing. He's got new life. That's a little concerned about Anthony Recker. He's got bone chips in his elbow. That's something that might have to be addressed at season's end, if not sooner. And a minor league deal with the Twins and got a catcher. Cash considerations. He's a triple A. Already lost Travis Darno for three weeks with a broken finger. Three balls, two strikes. And Peterson took one at the knees. And I don't get it. I, I know the ball's moving. That was three called strikes on fastballs this inning. Replay helps the Braves score their first run. Low price every day. And that is on the board. They score their first run on a replay review. Anthony Recker blocked the plate. AJ Brzezinski originally called out. But review showed Recker blocked the plate. Braves got a run on Simmons' RBI double. And now Julio Turan hopes to settle in. Now down only by a two run margin. He's got Recker, Cologne, and Curtis Granderson coming up. Well, maybe that'll stir him up a little bit. He ended the inning on a good note with a strikeout and a pop up. And there's Wrecker and KJ Krasinski and the home plate umpire Jordan Baker all talking about that appeal. Limits of time for Wrecker this year, just three at bats. Ball strike. Two. Oh, and two. Toward the stands near the tarp. And Anthony Recker still in O to your bowl. Recker 6'2, 238, lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And this one's bounced toward third. Lansbury's got it. Bounced toward the first. Is out number one. That's three straight retired by Julio, but now you've got Dave Cologne coming up. <laughs> That's a good turn. This is in Atlanta. Braves brought the infield in, and he hits a ball about a foot outside off Alex Wood and dumps it out behind the second. The play to run. Ruck Flores in and very proud of himself. That was the game winning yeah, RBI. It was. Matt Cologne's not going to run in his last two outings. After as Joe said, no RBIs in 10 years. He was dead. Ah. 
He may not swing the bat this entire season. Oh, I don't know. It's just that that helmet needs a chin strap. <laughs> yep. He let it rip. A ball, two strikes. Down swinging, second strikeout for Tehran, who's retired his last four in a row. Almost at the time, Julio really struggled with his command in the first inning. He appeared to be as cold as the Patriots. But there's a lot of baseball left to play today in New York. Over here, turn back over the offense in the third inning. Down for Rudy at the center. That's a good sign. Anderson at 196. The movement on that. Two seamer. For Anderson, give up on it. To it though. Fly ball right. And Marcakis should gather it in, and he will. Much better inning for Julio Tehran. One, two, three, and out go the Mets. Julio will back first in the third down. Three one. Sports celebrates 50 years of the Atlanta Braves. 50 years of baseball in Atlanta. And the Braves rekindling their rivalry with the Mets. Down 3 to 1 as we head to the third inning. Julio Tehran will start against Bartolo Colon. Julio's one for four at the plate. And that's in for a strike. Teron Young and Kayaspo. Braves. Oh, oh and two. Bet that felt good on a cold day. Yeah, hopefully it didn't. Uh, 
didn't get too far in. High fastball got it. Four strikeouts for Bartolo Colon. And you can see that his fastball it tops out at about 91, but he can rush it up there when he wants to. Run something up and out of the zone, four seamer, he can do that too. The balls, I should say, one out for Eric Young, who bunted into shallow right field for the game's first hit. Line drive bunt. Swings away this time and skies it towards center. And to push it out a bit. Lagaris, though, gold lover. No trouble. Two outs. Look at it this way. If you don't pitch in the big leagues. You're not going to pitch in the big leagues at age 41, weighing 285 pounds if you haven't learned a little something by now. And he certainly has. And he enjoys pitching and it shows. And I think that's an interesting choice of words. He's pitching, not throwing. He doesn't use max effort with every pitch. Change of speeds, moves it around. That's the get himself out. And he throws them an awful lot, as you've said. There's been a lot of fastballs taken that appear right down the middle of the plate in this game. The thing that is most troubling is that they were all called third strikes. Freeman, Gomes, and Peterson. Now you know how aggressive Johnny Gomes is. And for his ball to be moving this much on a strike three pitch where you're trying to put the ball in play or guard the plate and looking fastball and didn't swing still, that tells you a little bit about what he's able to make the baseball do. Two strikes just past two o'clock Eastern Time. It's got three in the first, the Braves one in the second. Rounded toward Murphy. He's got it. And the peg the first in plenty of time. Bartolo Colon gets the Braves one, two, three in the third. Big Moppers up for New York with a two run lead. Become an A-list member today and get exclusive benefits customized to meet your needs. You'll also get a chance to get your seats in 2015 
for SunTrust Park. A-list prices increase next Friday, so visit Braves.com slash A-list or call 404-577-9100 to join the A-list today. Mike Mills is here from REM. The Mets are shiny, happy people right now. They've won 10 <laughs> consecutive games. Part because Juan Lagares has played great defensively and he's alive at the plate. He's hit safely in nine straight games. Ian Falco was here. Nurse Jackie threw out the first pitch today. I got a little nervous. I was wondering if Tony Soprano was going to come back from the grave and want the booth. Balls, two strikes. I love that show. Well, they have their fair share of celebrity stars who love the Mets. Glenn Close is a big Mets fan. She's performed the national anthem a time or two, and the Braves have been in town. And staying high for Moody Hill, one ball, two strikes. These are interesting times for baseball fans in New York. The Yankees are in a bit of a state of flux. The Mets are soaring. And a big weekend showdown looms in the Bronx. Good pitching matchups in all three of those games. It's a great top three start. Lined up and ready to go against George Girardi's club. A scary yesterday announcing that Matt Harvey has a bit of an ankle sprain. He suffered it shagging fly balls in spring training. It's begun to bother him a bit. And Ligaris didn't get an off speed breaking ball, and Pazinski will throw him out at first. One man down. An obvious difference between the beginning of the game and the last two innings. Julio Tehran just in command and feel of his pitches. Good break the balls there to Lagaris. Julio set down six straight, and that'll bring up Duda. It's his second base on balls in the first inning. Scored a Murphy double. Braves shift, and that just missed outside. Brzezinski held it there for a moment. Baker said it was outside. Do it showed but game winning hit he got last night was right between short and third. I can do that again with no interference defensively. You got a quarter call that time, two balls and a strike. A little off. Got some good sinking action on the changeup. Caught the inside corner. Ball's moving. He's got a feel for his release point now. He's working quicker. Stride due to hit to the mile down the right field line. Marquez near that wall, and Nick won't have a play. Kiaspo playing Rover out there in shallow right field with the shift on. He was as close to it as Marquez was.
ricochet off AJ Pruszynski. Got mask and chest. Shook off three pitches, wanted to throw the slider. Made a good pitch, but Duda spoiled it, much to the chagrin of AJ. He's got the sunglasses on behind the mask now. Duda sprays one to the left side. Long run goes. That one, though, is also into the seats. Yeah, I, I noticed that last inning, Jim, about the sunglasses, and maybe because the sun keeps kind of coming in and out, and I don't know if there's some glare out there that he's got to deal with in the background. Golly. He's a different hitter, isn't he? Back a couple of years ago, yeah. they didn't really have a spot for him. He played the outfield rather unsuccessfully. Split time with Ike Davis at first base. About a year ago, the Mets decided to move Ike Davis to the Pirates. Gave Lucas Duda the job, and they and he have not looked back since. Well, he's certainly trusting his hands. He's staying back and spoiling a lot of good pitches by not trying to overswing. In the beginning of the series, how he had really worked hard to get himself in shape. He's a lot trimmer than he was. And he's about to see his 11th pitch of the at bat. Next, Tehran is set down six straight. Terrific at bat by Duda here in the home third. And he coaches a walk. Four walks from Julio today. Well, that one was hard earned. The other three in the first inning, not so much. Dyer had the third of those three first inning passes. And that's up and away, ball one. It's not real dark here. No. Sure, you saw the highlights from Detroit yesterday in Pittsburgh too. Nasty weather. As that one rolled slowly to the left side. Kiasper flips to second one. Throw to first, short hop and out in time. And here's the second out. Late spring snowstorms in Pittsburgh and Detroit. Last evening. It's Getting windier and colder feels by the minute here in New York. Pretty good glove work there by the Braves in a series here where they've committed three errors already. Good quick release by Kiaspo and boy, Jace Peterson is getting better and better, at least in my view, on turning that double play. That was quick. Murphy with a three RBI day. And he's ahead in the count. A move. Recorded his first pickoff in Toronto. AJ 
Jay Krasinski is one of the game's best defensive catchers, and not just this year, but historically speaking. A thousand or more games, but he has the best fielding percentage in the history of the game. Yes, he does. You're shocked if the ball gets by him. And it's gotten so dark here, he's taking his shades off. Two balls, no strikes. And nothing. Spring foul, two and one. Last night we were delayed at the start of the ball game about a half an hour. That front has moved through at brisk, gray, windy weather greets us for the series wrap up. Fans are bundled up. Those flags at the top of the stadium that I can see down the left field line are just starched, blowing across from the left field pole to the right field pole. Temperatures in the 40s. That's five walks for Tehran today. He breezed through the second. Started Lagaros with a strikeout. Now has walked to Murphy. And now Cabrera is at second. Murphy at first. Now Campbell to Aaron. Braves bullpen may have no choice but to go to work. Well, it's going to be a short day no matter what happens because he's already at 70 pitches and his pitch count's going to dictate how long he can go. You mentioned that San Francisco start where he had so much trouble uh -huh. controlling the baseball. And that was the second five walk game of Julio Tehran's career. May 14th last year at AT&T Park. He's walked five here in New York in very similar weather conditions. Campbell took a call third strike in the first inning. And the Mets with the lead have the luxury of waiting out Julio Tehran in this game. His second cousin Sugar Ray Marimon begins to loosen up. Good pitch. Didn't get the call. Baker, you could hear him up here saying it was in. Four seamer right by him. Now make a good pitch. Get out of the inning. Well, the rate the Mets are going. I wonder if anybody's walked up to David Wright and said, "Well, couldn't have done it with you." <laughs> Hurt himself sliding into second base, injured his hamstring. He's beginning to work out. They hope he'll be back within a three-week time frame. This has got to be eating his lunch, not to be on the field for all of this. Two-two Who two is high. The runners will move with two outs now. The Braves were hoping for from Julio today. Five walks, down 3-1. He's only in the third inning. Runners go. The pitch is lined into left field. That's going to be caught on a slide by Johnny Gomes. It hung up for an eternity, and Johnny tracked it down, and the Mets are down in the third.
from the dugouts in New York. And this was the play at home plate that was reversed, originally called out because Wrecker was blocking the plate. Graves appealed and won the appeal that he gave A.J. Brzezinski nowhere to go. So the call was reversed. The Braves were on the board. The flying feet of A.J. Brzezinski. As you see what he's done in his debut in New York at City Field. He scored from first base and second base in about 18 hours in this ballpark. <laughs> He's in it took that long or just no, <laughs> no, that's AJ that was Joe but <laughs> no, I'm asking but you know if it wasn't for that rule everybody in baseball be raving about the way the Mets handle that relay play yeah, they would. Plate. Mm -hmm. that's the unfortunate thing for the baseball purists Braves are glad to get the run otherwise it'd be a three nothing game. And I understand what baseball wants to do. They want to minimize injuries. But as you said, catchers are taught how to protect themselves. And now they're having to relearn what they can do and what they can't. Out of play foul. One ball, two strikes. And there was no intent for Brzezinski. And I can understand if Brzezinski went in there and tried to blow up the catcher and try to run him over, Pete Rose, Ray Fossey type stuff. That wasn't the case. He had a hole, it was between the catcher's legs. But a record violated the rules. And the times they are a changing. Let's see if Atlanta can get something started here in the fourth. Nick Marcakis with a 2 2 count. And that's hammered toward right. Randerson on the run. That ball jumped over his head. It dies at the base of the wall, and Nick Marcakis will stand at second with a leadoff double. That's two balls hit by the Braves to that part of the ballpark that have found another gear today. It makes it three for nine in the series, and this ball did jump. High fastball, letter high. And Granderson thought. The ball was going to come off a little harder off the padding, but instead it hit that chain link section of the fence. So he had to go get it, and it gave Nick an extra step or two. At the very least, Freeman hopes to get Marquez to third with nobody out. He's yeah. Got the strikeout ball working on the series. Yeah, this stage of the game, only in the fourth inning, down two runs, you've got to pull the ball. This and Freddie's had a bad series. 0 for 8. But if you've only if you're simple minded about it, you only got one thing to do here, and that's try to pull the ball and get the runner over. All of a sudden, a lot of that other stuff goes out of your head, and you're only concentrating on that one thing. Well, he shoots it to left. That'll work. First and third now for Atlanta. Freeman does have his first base hit of the series, and Atlanta has the tying runs aboard in the inning. He didn't pull it, but that'll work. It even works sometimes on a hit and run. If, if a guy is struggling, you put a hit and run on, so he knows that all he's got to do is is put the ball in play and protect the runner. That helps a guy who's struggling. Golden chance for the Braves in the fourth inning. Brzezinski is four for four in the series. Sharply hit to Murphy. Well, it was, and they were at double play depth. They were going to 
concede the run. That's why Terry Collins has got his back to the field because he's chewing through his lip. But Murphy deep out there thought that he could cut off Marquez and a good hustle, good stop and turn around by Nick. He knew he was going to be a dead out. Have them loaded with nobody out. Just a terrible middle mistake there by Murphy. He turns the double play. The Braves get a run, but they'd be two outs. And nobody on. And now they're loaded for Gomes and nobody out. Thank you very much. Gomes took a third strike his first time up. Coach. And especially with Johnny's success against Cologne, that could turn into a huge play right here. Players are hitting 280 as a club with runners in scoring position this year. Up look at Murphy boys. One of the last holdouts for flip down sunglasses, isn't it? But as dark as it is right now, a smart idea. Let's see if Gomes can shorten his stroke and put it in play. Two strikes, nobody out. Gomes just missed. Back to the outside corner. But a good waste pitch. Hot shot left field. Kadir's there. His throw back to the infield is cut off. Freddie Freeman broke awfully long from second base. Had Kadir taken a look, he might have had a shot there. But a hard hit ball is the first out of the inning. Well, the first reaction by Marcakis, too, was to break to the plate right there. He didn't go back right away. And I don't know if he could have scored anyway because of how close Kadir was when he caught that ball. But it was hit so sharply. Nick's first move was to go home. That's Dan Worthen, the Mets pitching coach. Martola Colon. Yeah, okay, base is loaded. Yeah. Look at the ball in the yeah. air. I don't speak English anyway, so I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, this to the English. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, to the second baseman. <laughs> You know they're worried about Anthony Simmons, who's red hot, seven-game hitting streak. And it's his double to the gap that brought home AJ Brzezinski for the first Braves run. Mentioned the team risk numbers. Hamilton's leading the charge there. And he becomes the key man in the inning with one man out. Impressive thing about Hamilton's start to the season is how consistently he's put the ball in play. Yeah. And you like his chances here with Cologne being around the plate. He does put it in play and serves it to right. Base hit. One run scores. Atlanta plays it station to station. 
Angleton Simmons is two for two. Arcaka scores to make it a 3 2 Mets game. It looked like that pitch was away. I'd be interested to see the location because of Anderson being able to go to right field. He stayed on that ball a long time. The two seamer trying to come back to the outside corner and served it to right field. I'll Excellent we, piece of hitting. Sorry, Joel, but we can count on two hands the number of times Anderson hit the ball like that to right field last year. Well, not very many. Especially with the bases loaded, he always wanted to hit a long fly, hit it out. The Braves are in business. Great chance to tie the game with Jace Peterson up there. Just took a call for a strike against Columbia his first time up. And he was aggressive, he didn't get it. Kelly Johnson's out on deck. He would hit for Tehran if that spot comes up. Second of the year and a game tire. And the Daniel Murphy decision cost the Mets a couple of runs. That allows the Braves to keep Julio Tehran in the game. He's got new life for tied 3 3. Now, now watch Lagaris here. We talked about his throwing a couple of nights ago. Watch how he steps behind and then watch the throw. It started at the mound, almost on the first base side of the mound, and then he's got to cut it back to the plate. Boy, does that lose a lot of steam on the throw? It's tough to be accurate, but it's all about his footwork and how off it is. Braves take advantage. How about one in the dirt with Tehran up there? Be nice. He hits with men at the corners, two outs. 3-3. Three, three. Braves have tied it. And Julio shoots one toward left. But Kadir is going to catch it. Danny Murphy made a big mistake, and that cost the Mets the lead. Simmons and RBI, Peterson RBI, and we head to the bottom of the fourth tied up.
Time for our T-Mobile game changer. We've already seen Edwin Simmons have an impact in today's ball game, and that's nothing new, Joe. He loves facing the Mets. Yeah, and this has been updated. One strikeout now for every 31.8 plate appearances. That's the best rate in the major leagues. And hitting 429 with men in scoring position. That also updated. And he's up to 10 RBIs. That's the most on the team. And bright sunshine appears at the ballpark all of a sudden. So that's a good omen for Julio Tehran, who could use an easy inning. He's got the bottom part of the lineup coming up for the Mets. He's got new life. Three to three now. Julio has to get through five innings to have a chance to win his third game of the season today. Wilmer Flores starts. He's the Mets shortstop. And he takes low, ball one. Third home run of the season here last night. In fact, his last five big league homers have come at City Field. And he just broke his bat and he serves one in the shallow left. Bears can't get him out. I like his approach. I like his swing. I like his stance. He's very calm at the plate. He's very upright. There's no wasted motion and he just lets his hands work. And gets the barrel to the ball. Ball way inside on him, broke as bad as you said, but he still was strong enough to get a base knock. He'll be 24 in August. 6'3, 203 pounds. Out of Venezuela. Valencia, Venezuela to be exact. And good start for the Mets. Here's Wrecker. He takes the ball high. Ball no strikes. Many base runners as they've had, that's only their second hit. And the other was the three run double by Murphy. Five walks by Tehran today. Now, an even count. Late. It's one and two. He hit the ball sharply though after falling behind on the count his first time up. Hit one hard to Kayaspo. Take that same thing right here. Swing on the appeal at first, two and two. One more note on Wilmer Flores, was the third Mets rookie to have six or more RBIs in a game. He was the seventh player since 1920 to have a game with six RBIs as a second baseman and as a shortstop. Hmm. Impressive. He was the only man to do that in the same season. Six is a second base with six is a first stop in the same year. One of the other six players to do that was Jeff Blouser. Probably watching the game back in Atlanta today. One of those games might have been that three homer game at Wrigley that Jeff had. Two balls, two strikes for Anthony Wrecker. Start behind the plate. That's today. And he was late. Tehran got him with a fastball. There's out number one, Bartolo Colon, the hitter. Four seamer upstairs. A little different look in the face of Julio Tehran now versus all that struggling he was doing in the first inning. Hard time gripping the baseball and comfortable, look cold. And walk three guys before Murphy's double. 
Cologne will try to bunt. Off the plate. <laughs> he, he's cracking me up. He almost has a look on his face. Like he knows he's getting the bunt sign, but he's smiling because I can't bunt. <laughs> He's going to try it again. That was pushed foul. What ball to strikes. Bartolo broke in with Cleveland back in the late 90s. Then the White Sox, the Angels, the Red Sox, back to the White Sox. Yankees, the A's, where he won 18 games in 2013 and 15 games for the Mets last year. He got it down with a 1 2 count. And Toronto has plenty of time to get Bartolo Colon. Sacrifice is a beauty. Well done. When you think he might be overmatched up there. What else you like about Bartolo Colon? He's a good teammate. After that half inning ended for the Mets defensively, the first guy he went over to was Daniel Murphy and gave him a pat on the back. So it's all right. Tie game. After Murphy failed to start a double play, it led to a two run Atlanta inning. So Anderson, the batter, runner at second, 3 3 game. He's walked, scored, and flied out. Shutdown innings have been hard to come by for the Braves on this road trip, especially in Toronto. But this is a key one right here, trying to salvage one game out of these three here in New York. After coming back to tie it up. Pickoff play, and they got it. That helps. Julio Tehran, one of the best pickoff moves in baseball, just nailed Flores at second base, and that will send him into the fifth inning. It's still a 3 3 score. Good play with this pickoff. Great timing. Perfect spot for the throw. Everything worked in sync there. Beautiful. 
So now the Braves one two three hitters are up against Bartolo Colon. Young Kayaspo and Marcakis. Backed up. Strike two. Figuring things out, they're beating the Phillies again. That's four nothing in the sixth inning. Miami beat them six to one last night. David Phelps is starting for the Fish today. Sound is down on strikes. One away in the fifth inning. A lot of that damage last night was after Cole Hamels had left the game. I think he only gave up one run. He hasn't won yet this year. Philly's really struggling to score runs. Chase Utley started to play today, hitting 120. Ryan Howard's been dropped in the batting order. He's hitting sixth or seventh most of the time for the Phils. We'll see them tomorrow. Pitch to Kayaspo is up and away. One ball, no strikes. He hit into a reviewed double play and also is grounded out to second base. Record takes a shot. Cubs and Pirates are battling to a 4 4 draw. That game's in the sixth inning. And the game is in Pittsburgh. Pirates beat the Cubs 4 3 last night. This ball's popped into center. Bright sunshine should be no trouble for Juan Lagares. It isn't. Two out. How's this for a baseball rarity? Tony Watson pitched a two inning save. Remember those? Uh -huh. Two inning save for the Pittsburgh Pirates last night. And closer Mark Melanson was unavailable because he had a heavy workload. Pittsburgh's trying to come on a little bit in the National League Central. Here's Marcakis. Nick is one for two, a double, and a run score, and good base running. Here's the decision of Daniel Murphy to come to the plate. Scramble back to third, keep the inning alive instead of a double play. Ray's got two runs. He got, about, he got about halfway home, and you can even see his skid mark out there in the dirt where his spikes dug in to try to stop and go back to third base. That's what drew the throw from Murphy. And he got it all started with a ringing double. Double his second of the year for the Braves. One more pitch. He's taken a moment. Two more. Nick has something that I've never seen before until this year, and now some other players are ordering their own, and that is a bat case. You know, not just a typical bat bag made out of canvas, but a molded plastic foam filled case to hold each of his bats.
here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That means it's trivia time. And our trivia, as always, brought to you by AT&T Universe. On this date in 1962, the Mets won their first game in franchise history. Who was the winning pitcher of the 1962 New York Mets? Was Warren Spahn on that team? I know Don Zimmer was on that team. Roger Craig. Roger Craig, I think, was on that team. Love the Warren Spahn catch. That yeah, I, I think it might be. Nineteen sixty two Mets. As Curtis Granderson goes to work first. Had a tough year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say they lost one hundred and twenty games. Roger Craig was their opening day starter in nineteen sixty two. Richie Ashburn played center field and led off. Bill Hodges played first base. Don Zimmer was their starting third baseman that year. Casey Stingle, number 37, was their manager. We had the famous quote, can anyone here play this game? <laughs> Gil Hodges at the first homer in the history of the Mets on April 11th, 1962. Ground ball up the middle. Jace Peterson gets there. Couldn't get it out of his glove cleanly. And Granderson will pick up an infield hit. Hard to believe that with Jace Peterson, you're watching the replay there. He was on the first base side of second. And Anderson was played up the middle, but look at Anderson. He was there to back it up, too. He might have been able to make the play. Season was 1969, and they won it all. 100 games. So you can understand the city's giddiness after the way this organization started. And that was at Chase Stadium when they won it in '69. They started their history at the old Polo Ground. Correct. Casey Stengel once was a young player in the 30s, maybe the 20s. Once hit a home run and had a, a pigeon inside his hat. Came out for a curtain call or crossed home plate off his cap and a bird flew out. <laughs> Named the old professor because of his unique ability to, shall we say, garble the syntax. <laughs> Mangly <the> English language. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Oh, 
You ever get a chance to hear a replay of a speech made by Casey before a Senate subcommittee on the reserve clause in baseball, maybe the antitrust clause? He went on and on and on and on, and then someone said, Well, how about you, Mr. Mantle? What do you have to say about it? He said, I'll go along with what Casey said. <laughs> yeah. and the, room, the room broke up. It was a pickoff play at first. That 69 Mets team beat the Braves in the first ever divisional playoff series in the National League. Series three games tonight. Swing and miss, ball drop. Granderson in safely. And McGarris is out on strikes. Runner at second, one away here in the fifth. That's five strikeouts for Julio Tehran, but after 102 pitches, that's going to be the end of the line. 32 first inning pitches for Julio that saw him walk three Mets, all three of them scored. And on a cold, dry, windy day in New York, it wasn't Julio's day. He leaves tied up. Ian Thomas on to face Lucas Duda. When the Reds come to town April 30th through May the 3rd, hope families will join us for some great family activities at the ballpark. Friday nights is always our Georgia Lottery Fireworks Nights. Every Sunday is Alumni Sunday with autograph sessions, kids run the bases, and a whole lot more fun. Visit Braves.com slash tickets and plan on bringing your family out to the ballpark. Julio Tehran can't win today. And hopefully Ian Thomas can prevent him from being on the hook for the loss. This is his second outing of the year. Yeah, he worked a, an inning, the fifth inning of game one, issued a walk. He got through it with no damage. And was pitching real well in double A AA and triple A when he was called up. Six and a third innings of one hit shutout ball. And double A and triple A combined. Well, this is where Lucas Duda has dramatically improved his game. The lefty lefty situations. He hit 180 last year against South Boss. RBI chance for him here with Ian Thomas turning it loose. This year, Duda, six hits in 13 tries against lefties. That's why he can play every day. For him, he's walked twice and scored once. And he's quickly behind on two. Two well located fastballs has him behind in the count. Anderson reached on an infield hit up the middle. Now an 0 2 count. 
and he just missed a corner. Granderson's doing a lot of talking to Handleton out there. Like, probably a lot of it, like, stay away from the bag. I don't want to get picked off. Side corner twice didn't get it twice two and two now. Yeah, they were good pitches though. Just a little bit off. Another sign that Duda is seeing the ball well and staying back and not offering too soon. See how windy it is. Just look at the uniform pants of Ian Thomas rippling as he stands on the pitcher's mound. Yeah, between innings, there there are a lot of ushers and security people running out on the field to pick up hot dog wrappers that are blowing around. Baseball days. Good winning block. A good blocking. Yeah. Block. Here's Kadire. Bases on balls. Been a problem for the Braves bullpen. We talked about that. They've been a huge problem for Julio Tehran today too. And that's one inside. One and out. And that's eight walks by the bullpen in six innings in this series. Strikes him out or pops him up. A good chance right hander will come in. You know, Murphy would love to atone for his mental mistake in the fourth inning. He's knocked in all three Mets runs today. That was with a bases loaded double. He's got him loaded here in the fifth again. Yeah, takes a strike. Field hit. 
Duda reaching the walk after a strikeout. Kadair just walked. 3 3 game, bottom of the fifth. Fastball and try to throw a strike. He's got two pitches left to do it so that he doesn't force in a run. He's not throwing his breaking ball for a strike, but I thought maybe Murphy would offer it at that one, but he didn't. He swung late, and Thomas got his man. Two outs. And a strikeout in his third of an inning. Slider. And Sugar Ray is going to come on and face Eric Campbell with the bases loaded. Game still tied. 3-3. Three, three. The men's continue to bat. We'll see how Sugar Ray fares against Eric Campbell. To Nationals starting Monday through Wednesday. Great ticket offers are out there for you. Sports Clips $8 Mondays get you a terrace level seat for $8. The Coca Cola $12 Tuesday deal gets you a club level seat for just $12. Go to Braves.com slash specials for the lowest ticket prices and best deals for the 2015 season. No margin for error for Sugar Ray Maremo. He's got Eric Campbell, the Mets third baseman up there. Bases loaded, two outs in a tie game, fifth inning. Worked the eighth inning of game one of this series. Seven to one Mets win. He gave up two runs in the eighth. Three hits and a walk. Got to come in throwing strikes. Third pitcher of the inning for the Braves. Missed outside. Short breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. The PNC pitching performance box tracks here. I'm surprised he didn't get that call when he should have. That one dropped off the table and missed. 2 0. Somebody knocked over a trash can at Matter's Eye. The 
2 0 pitch. Right there. Campbell's had a good eye in this series. Three walks in the first two games due to a couple of hits. Johnson's not a rookie. He walked three last night. Braves defense has been outstanding. No reason to be missing this much. Worried about contact. Today, three of them have scored. And popped up by Flores. That's being pushed by the wind into the seats, and almost behind 0 2. Georgia Power and Dodge, born Dodge. This series against the Mets has been anything but a walk in the park for the Braves. <laughs> Too many bases on balls today. The Mets have cashed in eight walks for three runs. And now it's a 4 3 lead for Bartolo Colon going to the sixth inning with Freeman, Pruszynski, and Gomes coming up.
Freddy scored the game tying run for Atlanta on a Jace Peterson sacrifice fly two innings ago. Game today. This is a happy anniversary date for the Hammer. On this date, in 1954 at Sportsman's Park, Henry Aaron hit his first Major League home run against Vic Rashi of the St. Louis Cardinals. How about that? 20 years later, he broke Babe Ruth's record. Think about that. Didn't really take that long. No. <laughs> Amazing. Average 35 homers a year for 20 years. Yeah. Pretty incredible. AJ Brzezinski shoots one up the middle. Have yourself a series, AJ. The way he's swinging the bat, I don't know if you can take him out of the lineup. Have yourself an April. And he was the guy that hit that hot shot to Murphy. That thought caused Murphy to come home and try to get Marcakis, but he hit it on the nose. So AJ Przinsky with five hits in the series and a seven-game hitting streak is aboard with one out. And Johnny Gomes the batter. He's 0 for 2. As Joe mentioned he's had real good luck in his career against Martolo Colon. Looks for some here in the sixth inning. How the baseball gods work. I mentioned Hank Aaron's first big league homer on this date in 1954. Another big league legend also homered for the first time on this date in 1939. Ted Williams. One ball, no strikes. And now 2 0. A couple of different pitches there. At least in uh, approach to try to get Gomes. He started him with a slider. He hasn't started too many guys with sliders today and then missed upstairs. Johnny's not a guy that typically will chase up. One of one run advantage. Did he go. He did. Another slider. Cold, windy day. The two sleeveless wonders are going at it. Two balls, two strikes. Hammer down the left field line. Can he keep it fair? He cannot. It's a foul ball. Slide and Johnny's trying to keep it fair. It couldn't. Maybe the worst pitch he's made today and got away with it. Being a true veteran, 
and knowing he can make a better pitch with it, he came right back with it. Full count for Johnny Gomes. AJ was going. Why not? He's already scored for first and second in this series. Why not do it again? I was just going to say, you mentioned he's two for three today, five for six in the series today, two for three. Collision at home plate with the catcher. He's run over the umpire. Typical day in the life <laughs> of AJ Brzezinski. Taking a couple of foul tips. He's going again. This time it's popped up. He'll slam on the brakes. Brzezinski's back to first. There's the catch for the second out. It's the life of a major league hitter. You just miss a home run, and then you pop out. And Anderton's the batter. He's two for two. He's knocked in two of the three Atlanta runs. Our T Mobile game changer graphic regarding Ambleton. He's only struck out twice now in 54 at bats. And he's been punching the ball to right field a lot more consistently. And a good hack at that one, too. Bullpen starts to work. It's not been an easy day for either starting pitcher. Now it's Torres. He's the first man up for New York. Alone one at that one. Pitch. Yeah, it has been. Brzezinski got an early start, and Cologne's going to try to pick him up. Whoa. Did he tag him out? Yeah, he did. Arguably the hottest hitter at the plate for the Braves. Brzezinski wandered too far off first. Cologne tracked him down to end the inning. Your score through five and a half.
At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. That may have been it for Cologne. He came in the dugout. Dan Worth and the pitching coach, Terry Collins, the manager, both came down to talk to him, and about all Martolo did was not. Yeah. Hey, but he's in line to go four and zero. Oh. Never won his first four starts of a season. He's won four decisions in a row, but never four for four in starts. He's never failed to go seven innings against the Braves. This will be the first time for that, but their bullpen continues to work. Here's the man with a near palindromic last name, Anthony Recker. The New York catcher. He's 0 for 2 today. And one for a strike from Sugar Ray Marimon. Trying to work. Uneventful and full sixth inning. And that's strike three, a breaking ball got his man. Good start. First strikeout for Sugar Ray. And it is the end of the line for Cologne. Kirk Neuenheis grabs bat. Back to back good breaking balls to get record. Strikeouts, no walks for Bartolo Colon over his six innings today. That's 107 hits. Teron walked five, struck out five, gave up four runs, and four and a third today. Tigers won. That's in the seventh inning in Detroit. The other AL action is later on. Miami's crushing the Phillies. Eight nothing. It's going to be a long summer for the Phillies. Yeah, it makes you wonder how long Cole Hamels will stay there. Ground ball. Peterson's got it. And Sugar Ray takes care of New York in easy fashion in the sixth. Bottom part of the order up to the Braves. And for New York after six.
three, and two of those runs knocked in thanks to Angelson, to Angelson Simmons today, a two RBI day for him, a double scoring A.J. Pruszynski. That gives him two RBIs today, 10 total on the year, the most of any Braves player. And Angelson told us he's feeling really comfortable at the plate these days. He's being a lot more patient in his progress, in large part to working with first-year hitting coach Kevin Seitzer, who told me recently he encourages these guys to be the same guy all the time. A lot of hitters want to get up there and do big things and big situations for Seitzer. The key is to remain the same at all times. And he said it's about keeping that heart rate where it needs to be and sticking to the approach, guys. That's very good stuff, Christina. And from Kevin Seitzer, that's a great idea for any hitter. Stay with your approach. Don't try to do too much. See it and hit it. We'll try to see it hit it out of the hand of Buddy Carlisle, the former Braves, on the pitch for the Mets here in the seventh. Simmons was in the box when EJ was picked off. Morgan fouls it away. It's already been a an award laden first month for Edelton Simmons. As you see the numbers from Buddy Carlisle. He's gotten his Rawlings Gold Glove, his Wilson Defensive Excellence Award, and on Monday, when Washington comes to town, Anderson will get his 2014 Gibby Defensive Player of the Year award on the field. Now what's that one? That is the Greatness in Baseball Yearly Awards, voted on by broadcasters, reporters, front office personnel, MLB alumni, and fans. And the Gibby Awards recognize the best players throughout college baseball. Hmm. So you and I must have voted on that. Pretty sure. <laughs> Remember somewhere along the line. It's Paul Anderson Simmons. Buddy Carlisle got the win here last night, just throwing a third of an inning in relief of Gil Martin. That was in the eighth inning. And strike three. Another fastball. Taken right down Broadway. Simmons retired for the first time. And there's out number one. Well, like Cologne, but he throws a lot of fastballs. He'll two seam it with a good sinker. Sinker slider type. But a lot of fastballs. After the Nationals are in town, the Reds will come a calling for a four game series that will take us into the first weekend in May. Friday night fireworks on May 1st, 7:35 start. It's always popular girls' night out promotion. Pre game party, 80s music, an exclusive bracelet, and the always important feather boa, which complements it. Join us, the Cincinnati Reds. As Peterson grounds the right side. Nice pick by Duda. Carlisle to the back. Nice coordination. Pretty play. Two out. Would have been a much more difficult play for Lucas Duda a year ago. <laughs> Smooth as silk at first base. And Kelly Johnson will bat here for Sugar Ray Marimon. Marimon an inning and a third. One walk, two strikeouts. Just to zeros. Braves down a run, trying to snap the Mets' 10 game winning streak. It's 9 0 on their homestand. Flash to the center, Lagaris broke in, now retreats. And he makes the play to retire the side. Three up, three down. We head to the stretch. New York leads by a run.
the Spider Man here in New York. Spidey Woody. And let's get back to our AT&T U-verse trivia question on this date 1962 the Mets won their first game in franchise history They only won 40 games that year who was the winning pitcher for the first time in the history of the Metropolitan I don't know why but I'm going to stick with Warren Spahn I'm going to follow your lead I have no clue Jay Hook Yeah there's going to be some hooks <laughs> On the trip to Philadelphia, jabs, yeah. crosses, yes. uppercuts. Did Warren Spahn, am I way off on that? Didn't he pitch for the. You asked Mets? that. I forgot to look it up between break. I will take a look. It's Luis Avalon. He's on to work for the Braves. Luis has pitched great baseball. He's done a terrific job coming out of the bullpen. One walk in seven outings. He did pitch for the Mets, I'm told, by the person who selected Jay Hook. Whose name will not be spoken anymore. But Warren didn't pitch for him until 65. Roger Craig was on that 62 Mets staff. Galen Cisco was on that staff. Al Jackson. Vinegar Ben Mazel was on that staff. Wow. He was born in 1913. <laughs> he pitched for the 62 Mets. That's great. No, that's not right. August 13th, August 13th, 1930 was Vinegar Ben Mazel. But still, oh. that's an old time name, man. Great nickname. As Juan Rivera's with a base hit, made a left field. Was it Clem? Was it Labine? Is that how you pronounce it? Or Labine? Clem, Clem Labine. Clem Labine was on that staff. Rivera's extends his hitting streak to 10 games. A little frustrated. He got the hit, kind of flipped the bat away because it had some rough at bats today before that one. Can't give him any more. No. Because we'll have the top of the order in the eighth. But outs are a precious commodity right now. That's 4 3. And Duda smokes one to right field. He is wearing everybody out. Lagaris around second on his way to third. There'll be no throw. Sports writers and major league managers hate leaky pens. And right now, that's the fate for Freddy Gonzalez. <laughs> Boy, fastball two in, and he turned on it. You said something the other day about Lucas Duda, like he's not the same guy. He's not the same guy that we were used to seeing. So back to back hits begins the New York seventh. Here's Kadire. He's walked twice, scored once, and a big swing and a miss. Is out of the Braves bullpen out of necessity because the starters have failed to pitch seven innings at all. I don't think a single starter has gone seven yet this year. But you look at Luis Avalon. This is his eighth game. He's gone six and a third innings. Brandon Kenneth, nine games, seven and a third innings. Jim and Johnson. Kenneth, and Kenneth is up again. Eight innings, eight appearances. Cody Mark, eight innings, eight appearances, ten innings. An off speed pitch there from Luis. And a 2 2 count. And everybody with their hand in their pocket or up to their mouth trying to keep their throwing hand warm. Luis. 
Reese has some cutoff sleeves on today. But it is a raw cold day. And I are just barely stay alive. Pitch for Kadair instead of first. Ground ball is short. Simmons to second one. And the floor to first in time. A double play. Kadair thought he beat the rap at first. The Mets get a run as Lagara scores to make it 5 3. And Terry Collins out to check the call to first. Ball rolled up on Andrelton just a little bit, which caused Peterson's timing to be off a little. And they are going to check it. And a run batted in on the line for Kadire on this replay. Runs across. Whether he gets credit for the RBI depends on the out or safe call. It's been a challenge filled game, challenge filled series. Looks safe. You're right. I think he will be called safe. Great replay angle from home plate on the video scoreboard that shows Kadire's foot on the bag before Freeman got the ball in the glove. Hendrickson had his glove down and and certainly feel it it okay but he didn't feel it cleanly It kind of rolled up on the heel of his glove and the time it took him to kind of grab the baseball and get it to Jace kind of threw Jace's timing off but he's definitely safe watching the replay here in the ballpark and you know what that's another great example as you see the ball roll up and that's already lead Kadire knows another run's going to come in but he's still busting down the line, running hard, and he might be rewarded with a run batted in for beating the play at first, and he will be. So Kadire has his eighth RBI. It brings home Lagaris on the force play, and New York does extend its lead to 5 3. Here's Murphy. He's knocked in three today. He's walked and struck out as well. And Kadir might be picked off. He peels off. Are they going to say it was a balk? Yeah, I yep. think Luis was going to the plate and changed his mind in mid direction. Kadir, when he got to second, kind of had his hands up. Run away! Yeah. But he heard the umpire yell, balk. Another runner in scoring position for Murphy. And tap foul for a strike. First final in the National League is in. The Pirates have beaten the Cubs. That's a 5 4 final score at PNC Park. Phillies are up in the ninth inning, trailing the Marlins 9 to nothing. Milwaukee's lead the Reds 3 2, eighth inning that game at Miller Park. One pitch for Daniel Murphy is fastball missed. Rockies won, Padres nothing. That game's in the second inning. Dodgers and Giants just underway, scoreless in San Francisco. Giants trying to get going. They beat the Dodgers two in a row. Out west, Giants will start. Oh. 
Did Bumgarner get the win last night in that two to one game over Kershaw? Well, it was Kershaw and Bumgarner, first time in baseball history, we're told, that the MVP faced the reigning World Series MVP in a starting pitching matchup in regular season play. It was a walk off win for the Giants, so no, neither Bumgarner nor Kershaw. Oh, that's right. Panic had a sack fly. Kershaw only went six. He's not going very deep in the start yet for the LA team. And Murphy takes a little one ball, two strikes. Murphy holler as that yeah. ball came buzzing in. He was already getting his yelp out of the way before he got hit. On that too. Well, he was flying. So a four RBI day for Murphy, and it's Avilan's turn to struggle out of the Braves bullpen. Two runs, three hits, and a balk. Well, the appeal at first base by Terry Collins on that play at first it was almost a double play. You wonder, well, why would they bother wasting an appeal there when they already got the run in? Now look what happened here. He came all the way around to score. He jammed his left hand and they're trying to touch home plate. Now he never touched it. He got up, walked over, and stepped on the plate. But you can see him wincing there. He may have stuck his left hand and wrist right into the gear of AJ Brzezinski. I recall Kadir was hit by a pitch in this homestand for the New York Mets. That might be a tender spot for him. But Kadir, crafty veteran, plays the game the right way, and he's rewarded with a run and an RBI here in the seventh. That base hit by Daniel Murphy chases Luis Avilan. The Braves have to go to the bullpen once again, trailing now by a 6-3 score. Look at that play at the plate again. Watching him try to slip his left hand in, but it went right into the shin guard. And, and then Jordan Baker saying, "Yeah, he did score. He was pointing at the plate." Kadire wasn't sure about that. That's why he went back and stepped on it. So it's 6 3 New York. The Braves will go to the bullpen once again before we tell you who's up and throwing. We'll remind you the Braves are headed down to Philadelphia. We open up a weekend series with the Fighting Phils. Game one tomorrow night, 6 30 Eastern with Braves Live. Game two also a 6 30 start on Saturday night. We'll have the road trip wrap up Sunday at 1 Eastern time. Alex Wood and Aaron Harang, former teammates, will meet in game one. Shelby Miller and David Buchanan pitch Saturday. Trevor Cahill and Jerome Williams will pitch on Sunday. And it is Brandon Kenneth who's been the busiest of the Braves relievers. Tenth game for him already. And this is the Braves' 15th game overall. He was in last night's game. Got the last out in the eighth inning. Rough day for the Braves relief core. After Julio Tehran left in the bottom of the fifth inning, three walks, three hits, two runs scored so far for New York. Murphy at second after his fourth RBI of the day. Sarah Campbell. 
he's hitless. New York six runs on six hits. All outside. Yeah, Marimon actually did a good job. You look at his line, an inning and a third, no hits or runs, a walk, two strikeouts. And that looks like he had a really good outing, but he's the guy that came in and walked in the winning run before he settled down to pitch a good inning. Yeah, that first batter faced stat is such a huge statistic for a relief pitcher. More often than not, they're going to come in with runners on base. And either Marimon or Thomas could be the first guy. Let's see if Kenneth has better luck. He's promptly behind three balls, no strikes. It's got three in the first. The Braves got one in the second, two in the fourth, which tied things up. They worked to the lead in the fifth on that walk Joe mentioned. They added two more here in the seventh. It seems like it takes the Braves relievers a long time to get out. So a lot of pitches to get out. They're really having to labor. Sometimes that's from not being able to get that first guy you were mentioning earlier. Sometimes it's because they're not able to throw first pitch strikes very often or often enough. But Kenneth with a nice rally to take care of Wilmer Flores, but the Mets add two big insurance runs. Big day for Daniel Murphy. He's knocked in four of their six runs today. His copyright.
game summary. For Julio Tehran, you just need to see the five walks at the end of his line there to understand how his day went. Three of those came in the first inning. They all three scored on a Daniel Murphy double. Bartolo Colon did not walk anybody, gave up some hits, had some defense make some suspect plays behind him. That was by Murphy that led to a two run fourth inning for Atlanta. And the Braves Andleton Simmons has had a good day driving in two of the three runs. Lots of base runners in this ballgame. Lots of walks from the Braves pitching staff today. Alex Torres, he of the protective cap, is on to pitch for New York. This is his seventh game. That's a standard baseball cap with that halo like device. I guess Velcro to it. Yeah, I think it's they probably took one of those things you wear on the airplane for your neck and just put put some blue material on it. He's got the top of the order. Eric Young Jr. leads off as we've hit four o'clock. And a strike from Torres. He was inspired to wear this protective headgear as a pitcher when his teammate Alex Cobb got hit down in Tampa Bay. He was the first man to wear it, you might recall. And it was with the Padres. Once we're really anxious about their club coming out of spring training or in the latter days of spring training, especially with their left handed relief corps, they had very little depth or help there. They got Torres and Jerry Blevins on the same day. Levins is out with a broken forearm. He was hit with a batted ball. Now Torres and Sean Gilmartin are their primary lefties. Fly ball left. Kadires had a good day. He gets there. He takes care of Young, who's one for four. One out. I yeah, remember they also lost Joey Edgen, the primary left handed reliever during spring training to Tommy John surgery. Josh Edgen, excuse me. Vic Black, Bobby Parnell. I mean, they just I can't think of a more injury riddled team in the major leagues than the New York Mets, yet they have the best record. And 12 and 3. That's Kayaspo hits. Their toes over 3 and is backed up. One ball, no strikes. As Joe said, we'll be big Yankees fans this weekend. That's who the Mets play. That series, they head down to Miami for three with the Marlins. Then the Nationals and Orioles on the docket for New York and they're in the first week of May. The means of strength. Miami did win today. They beat the Phillies 9 1. That's a final. Miami outscored the Phillies 15 2 over the last two days. So we miss. Maybe that'll take some of the heat off of Mike Redmond's seat in that manager's chair in Miami. Yeah, I hope so. Makes the Marlins 5 and 11. Chased a high fastball and didn't get it. Two outs. Tough man to strike out. He's retired here in the eighth. And Nick Marquez is the batter. He's done the score today. Still hitting 360. Makes him 10 for 20 on the road trip. He's hit an eight straight. And he takes a strike. Twenty three thousand nine hundred eighty the paid crowd in New York.
That one shot to left field. I'm just going to say, the thing that I've noticed about Nick the first two plus weeks is how simple his approach is at the plate. There is very little extra movement. See ball, hit ball, hit it where it's pitched. I watched him take some soft toss today in the indoor batting cage next to the clubhouse. And this was a lot of what he was doing right here. He was just trying to hit the ball either to the tarp in the back of the tunnel or into the screen to the left, to the left part of the batting cage. And he was hitting everything with authority on the soft toss and hit it just like he did there. It's his sixth hit of the year against a left handed pitcher. And it prolongs the inning for Freddie Freeman. Mark one, we have a one run game. Seen anybody challenge the new fences here in right center? Deep fly ball. This would be a perfect time for one. <laughs> Two. Series that the Mets were on a winning streak, playing good baseball, and yet they still hadn't got Murphy in track. And today he comes through with four RBIs, so that's going to help their offense if he can get going. Anderson's had a nice series at the top of the order. Flores is pretty much put to rest, as you said. Any thoughts about a change at shortstop? And they're doing it without David Wright and Travis Darno. Ball, two strikes for Freddie Freeman. High fly ball left. That's pretty deep, but Kadir is going to have room. No runs a hit. A man left. Bottom of the eighth inning. New York leads by three. We have the Hawks and Brooklyn Nets at 2.30 Eastern Time. And the Memphis Grizzlies face the Portland Trailblazers at 10 Eastern Time. The NBA playoffs are on Sports South and streaming on the Fox Sports Go app. Check your local listings for game availability in your area. Yeah, I'm sorry that the timing was such that 
we were here before the Hawks came up here to continue their playoffs with Brooklyn. Because you and I could have been over there with our pom poms going crazy for the Hawks. We can shimmy the pom poms with the best of. I've seen you. <laughs> Same thing, Wrecker. <laughs> Swigs and misses at strike one. Wrecker over three with a couple of punchies today. It's your rocket kicks that surprise me. I had no idea you were that level. We Macedonians are known for that. Other things. Strike one for Wrecker now. Strike two. Yankees won again. They beat the Tigers two to one. Should be a great series in the Bronx. The Yankees playing good ball. The Mets playing great. Yeah, they slowed the Tigers down a little bit. Kansas City can't beat Minnesota. By the way, Brandon. Records retired. Three strikeout day for him. Three up, three down for Brandon. Nine strikeouts. Danny Muno made a pinch hit appearance earlier in the series. You think of game one. Steve Reich call. Milwaukee won today. They beat the Reds four to two. Milwaukee needed that. Sure did. Three and thirteen. For the season. Cardinals over Washington early. That's one nothing in D.C. That's Michael Waka and Max Scherzer. Cardinals have won six of seven. National is excited because Anthony Rendon is beginning his comeback. He played five innings the other day. He's going to go to Double A. Get a lot of at bats there and. Hoping to ease him back into playing shape. I'm going to play nine innings. So they get him back to the big league clubs. Zinski's rough day behind the plate continues. Another rocket shot. Messed up his mask.
Speeds. And Ram Trucks, Guts, Lori, Ram. 6-3 is your score. We head to the ninth inning in what has been a magical start for the New York Mets. With all the injuries they have suffered, they've done a great job of picking that up. Let's not forget, their closer got suspended for a performance-enhancing substance. And into the fray comes Juris Familia, who's trying to save his eighth game this season. Perfect seven for seven. He worked a perfect inning last night. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Got Chris Johnson on three pitches to end the ball game. Throws hard, upper 90s with a slider. I'd say he's adapted to the role quite nicely. And he's getting a lot of opportunities. So AJ Brzezinski, Johnny Gomes, Hamilton Simmons are scheduled. Listen to the crowd on a cold day. They're trying to go 13 and 3, and that's the start of the 86 Mets. A quick strike to the Braves catchers and a marvelous series. AJ Brzezinski's five for six. His first action here at City Field. Ground ball. Murphy outfield grass. Catcher running. Got his man. One down. Here's Johnny Gomes. I think it's at least my opinion nothing about this Mets club has stood out they haven't pitched spectacularly they haven't fielded spectacularly with the exception of the Ligaris catch they haven't hit a bunch of home runs but they've done everything right by and large in this three game series they've got runners on they've advanced them put the ball in play Eight plays where they've had to. Well, one thing they've done real well is take advantage of a ton of walks. Yeah. Uh, I, I give them full credit for this great winning streak they're on and the, and the good play that they're exhibiting defensively and pitching wise. But the whole story would include a ton of walks that they've capitalized on offensively. Six men who have walked for the Mets have scored in this series. Including three today in the first inning. I've got the Braves with 17 walks. The pitching staff. Yeah, that's, that's unacceptable. That's, that's just way too many. Five by Julio Turan today in four and third innings. 17 walks, six score in three games. Now, I will say in Julio's defense in the first inning, he was. He, he couldn't grip the baseball. He was cold. I'm going to bet that he says afterwards that the ball was slipped to him. He couldn't get a feel for it. And we've seen him have that trouble before. That was last year out in San Francisco. Two and two for Johnny Gomes. Breaking ball, frozen. What a pitch. Good pitch. A short slider. But when you're sitting on his fastball and you see something kind of comes out of his hand kind of high. Going to freeze and that's what happened to Johnny. Hamilton Simmons, the final hope for the Braves. He's two for three. He's knocked in two of the Atlanta runs. He's hit the ball sharply to right and right center today twice. I will say this that Bobby Parnell can come back. Henry Mejia can come back. Tug McGraw can come back. God rest his soul. But none of them can pitch any better. This guy's pitching right now. He's lights out. One ball, no strikes for Angleton Simmons. Bartolo Colon's an out of the way from winning his fourth 
game in his fourth start, something he's never done. Leo Turan got away from suffering his first April loss in his big league career. That's got away from sweeping the Braves. Two balls and no strikes. Citizens Bank tomorrow night. Everything went right for New York in this sweep. 6-3 your final. We'll recap it for you in a minute. 